When examining igneous rocks, it is useful and very important to determine what magma type the rock we're looking at came from. And determining what magma type is based on identifying the minerals that are making up or the mineral composition of the rock. So when we look at different igneous rocks, we will see there are four different magma types that we're going to identify. The first is ultramafic. Ultramafic rocks are comprised almost entirely of olivine and can have few pyroxene minerals in them as well. So when we look at an ultramafic rock, or ultramafic rocks, we're looking at the olive green color for olivine and maybe some of the dark colored minerals being pyroxenes. But very iron and magnesium rich minerals comprised almost entirely again out of olivine. Our second magma type is mafic, and the generalization for mafic rocks is that they are dark in color. They are made from the minerals olivine, pyroxenes, which we've called algite in mineral lab, and calcium-rich plagioclase. Now, when you see plagioclase, you're typically told think white to light gray in color, but when you get to the calcium-rich end member of plagioclase, you're actually looking at a very dark black colored mineral. So when we look at mafic rocks, we can see very dark in color. This one's glittering because of its texture, which is phaneritic. But all of the minerals that were listed have a very dark color in appearance. Now, we may get some light coloring in the rock with larger crystals, uh, but because the ground mass is very dark in color, we're still looking at mafic rocks. And again, very iron magnesium rich. When the rock weathers, we get a lot of iron staining, uh, telling us that the mineral composition of the rock is mafic, very, again, iron and magnesium rich. The next magma type that we will see is intermediate. And when we're looking at rocks that have an intermediate magma type, we typically see colors of gray or sort of a Dalmatian appearance. Uh, we're looking at minerals for the dark color that are amphiboles, which can be uh, also called hornblende. Uh, it's the most common amphibole that we've seen in labs typically. And the other dark color you'll see at the bottom of the sheet is biotite. The light color that we often see in intermediate rocks is sodium-rich plagioclase. So again, calcium-rich plagioclase, very dark in color. Sodium-rich plagioclase giving us that very light color. And the amphiboles and horn, uh, horn blend specifically for what we've seen, as well as possibly some biotite, make up the dark color. So here's the one that looks kind of like the Dalmatian, the mix of light and dark colored minerals. Here is one that doesn't have that appearance, that has more of the gray sort of color all over with dark horn blends or amphiboles this time making up the larger crystals. The last magma type that we will identify is felsic. And when we look at rocks that have a felsic magma type, they're normally a shade of pink um, dominating the color palette. There can be examples of felsic rocks that are white or very light in color, but you typically see a shade of pink for the potassium feldspar that's dominating the rock. It also has a large, uh, compared to the other types, a quantity of quartz. You will see muscovite, plagioclase. Typically, the plagioclase in felsic rocks is white or very light gray in color, and it may have amphiboles and biotite in it as well. So when we look at felsic rocks, we will see there's a wide range of very light colors. Here, the pink color is dominating very strongly. Here, it's not nearly as pink, but because, again, it's a very light color, we can identify it as felsic. Another pink colored rock, the crystals are not large enough to see, but because of its color, we know that potassium feldspar is dominating. Here we're looking at two samples of the same rock. Both of these are granite, which has a felsic mineral composition, and you can really see the range of colors. This one, the potassium feldspar is very faintly pink, hard to see really at all that pink coming out. The quartz is gray, 
Uh, and you can kind of see light goes into it and it reflects light very easily, very, very shiny. We have a biotite crystal shining right there, dark black in color. There are amphiboles or hornblende, we can also call it, that's not nearly as shiny. There can be, again, muscovite in here. And then the white that we see in the light, light colored gray is plagioclase. Versus this rock that the potassium feldspar is a darker shade of pink. So again, you can see the range of sort of a dark pink to a very, very light pink for felsic rocks. It's extremely important to identify magma type for igneous rocks because that is going to be one of the main factors we use to distinguish them from each other.